How is it going, guys? We are back with another awesome video. This time, I'm going to be reacting to Why Doesn't the U.S. Know About Its Own Dutch Origins by the channel Geography Geek. So, as always, the link to the original video will be in the description section down below. So, make sure you go over there, check out their channel, show them some love, hit subscribe, hit like on their video if you enjoy this also. So, we're going to check this out find out why does the u.s not know about its own dutch origins so i know about new amsterdam and that whole thing and all that so um beyond that i'm not quite sure so we're gonna find out let me switch my screen over though boom here we go a couple months ago i made a video on why i thought the dutch had an underestimated impact on american history and the defining characteristics and values of the country today this was done primarily through the dutch colony of new netherland and its settlement of New Amsterdam that served as the seat of the colonial government. Yep. This video is kind of- I didn't know the colony was New uh, New Netherland though. I knew about New Amsterdam. I didn't know there was a colony, New Netherland, that New Amsterdam was inside of. So that's interesting. Part two to that one. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I've left a link in the description below. Most cool. Americans know little more about their Dutch past other than that the Dutch once occupied Manhattan and the legend that Peterman Wee bought Manhattan from the natives for $24 worth of household goods or seashells. Oh, wow. But even that story has its issues. The details surrounding the story suggest inaccuracies, questionable sources, and at a minimum, a misunderstanding between the parties involved. So that's the theme of this video. Okay. Why is the U.S. left with this one story, and a sketchy one at that? Why doesn't the United States know about its own Dutch origins? But before I get yes, too far very into interesting. it, first, I want to share a little part of my life outside of YouTube. One hey, of my hobbies before YouTube was creating decorative maps of my favorite places. So back in the summer of 2018, I started an online map shop called Zach's Map Shop. Like my videos, they can be a bit random. Awesome, a large awesome. portion of the maps are American national parks, but I'm slowly widening the range of maps available. I also sell historical prints now, not just my original designs. Most of my products are maps printed on high quality cool. poster paper, but I also sell other items such as stickers, notebooks, and coffee cups. Speaking With Christmas of just months away, selling items, guys, definitely go check that out if this is something you're into. Um, like I said, as always, I try to direct people to the original channel on any video that I am reacting to. So for sure, go check out their stuff. And also, um, I actually just recently started doing some merch. Um, don't have a lot out, but there might possibly be an ad link to it somewhere down below. So check that out. If not, I'll figure it out. Right. So items such as stickers, notebooks and coffee cups with Christmas just months away. If you're looking for something unique for a family member or friend or you're like me and just like to decorate your own home with maps, come check out my shop. I deeply appreciate nice. any purchases as it helps support me and this channel. You can check me out on Etsy or at my website at zaxmapshop.com. Now Let's back out, to guys. this video's topic. The United States isn't ignorant of its Dutch past because it <laughs> chose to be, but its main former colonizer, the British, probably were. The United States just inherited the ignorance. The okay, so I see. So because the British people are the ones that uh, founded our country and, and stuff like that here, um, maybe they just weren't fond of the... Dutch at the time, and so they suppressed all knowledge of that. Uh, so then we became an independent nation. All we had is the stories and, and whatever that the British gave to us. So uh, maybe, maybe. The British probably were. The United States just inherited the ignorance. The Netherlands yep. and Britain had a long-lasting rivalry over dominance of global trade. Four wars occurred between England and later Great Britain in the 17th and 18th centuries, with the last coinciding with the American Revolution. In 1664, New Netherland and its seat of government, New Amsterdam, was taken from the Dutch by the English. And though the Dutch are generally considered to have won the war that immediately followed, the Second Anglo-Dutch War, the Dutch didn't push for New Amsterdam's return. They were satisfied with keeping what was thought to be a more valuable and formerly British colony, the newly seized Suriname. New Netherland and its seat of government, New Amsterdam, were changed to the province of New York and New York City by the British. And uh, I'm pretty sure the Dutch made a big mistake in that. And, you know, I don't know what that island is all about right now, but it certainly isn't 
as valuable as New York City would be, but then again, the American economy and, and whatever helped build that up into the city that it is today too. So I don't know for sure how it would have turned out, um, you know, the other way around. I don't know. That's interesting. And it would stay in their hands for over a century. The region's history was essentially reset. An excerpt from a journal belonging to an 18th century Virginia gentleman named William Byrd II, Get I believe hair, displays though, huh? his English attitude <laughs> and bias against the Dutch. He wrote this in 1728, as he and a party of surveyors drew the border between the colonies of Virginia and North Carolina. Another limb lopped off from Virginia was New York, which the Dutch seized very unfairly, on pretense of having purchased it from Captain Hudson, the first discoverer nor was their way of taking possession of it a whit more justifiable than their pretended title. Their West India Company tampered with some worthy English skippers, who had contracted with a swarm of English dissenters to transport them to Hudson River, by no means to land them there, but to carry them some leagues more northerly. This Dutch finesse took exactly, and gave the company time soon after to seize Hudson River for themselves. But Sir yeah. Samuel Argall, then governor of Virginia, Understanding how the king's subjects had been abused by these republicans, marched thither with a good force, and obliged them to renounce all pretensions to that country. The worst of it was, the knight depended on their parole to ship themselves for Brazil, but took no measures to make this slippery people as good as their word. No sooner was the good governor mm -hmm. retired, but the honest Dutch began to build forts and strengthen themselves in their ill-gotten possessions. Nor did any of the king's liege people take the trouble to drive these intruders thence. The civil war in England and the confusions it brought forth allowed no leisure for such distant considerations. Though it is strange that the protector, who neglected no occasion to mortify the Dutch, did not afterwards call them to account for this breach of faith. However, after the restoration, the king sent a squadron of his ships of war under the command of Sir Robert Carr and reduced that yeah. province to his obedience. Some time after, his majesty was pleased to grant that country to his royal highness, the Duke of York, by letters patent dated March the 12th, 1664. But to show the modesty of the Dutch to the life, though they had no shadow of right to New York, yet they demanded Suriname, a more valuable country, as an equivalent for it, and our able ministers at the time had the generosity to give it them. Looking at this excerpt, it mm. appears not just New Netherland, but really anything considered a Dutch success was probably suppressed. So, at the time, the island was worth more than. So the Dutch were coming out ahead at the time, kind of. This includes the Second and Third Anglo-Dutch Wars, which played significant roles in American history, but are rarely talked about. In 1667, the Netherlands attacked my home state of Virginia, Okay, yeah, so because of the English, uh, British people, and the Dutch, Netherlands people uh, kind of having their issues over the years. I, yeah, I could see that. I mean, since we have clearly a Britain, British influence here in this country, I mean, hmm. At the mouth of the James River, as part of the Second Anglo-Dutch War. I've lived in Virginia my entire life and didn't know this until a few weeks ago when a friend of mine told me that while doing some genealogical research, discovered that one of his ancestors had been killed by a cannonball during the conflict. You know, interesting, I've been doing some genealogy research and I found out that one of my ancestors came from Germany to the United States and actually died in Jamestown. Um, the same guy was married, or his parents were married, in uh, Amsterdam, actually, which is, is pretty pretty cool back in... Uh, Early 1700s, I believe it was, I think. The fleet that attacked Virginia was led by Abraham Cranston, the same admiral who just months earlier had taken the British colony of Suriname. The Dutch returned to attack at Hampton Roads in the Third Anglo-Dutch War as well. But colonists slowly stopped identifying as Englishmen, and resentment towards the British eventually grew. Independence was declared in 1776 yeah. and officially achieved in 1783 which the Dutch actually helped the U.S. achieve. I made a video about this as well. Yeah. At this point, Americans having a shared resentment of the British would have probably been more open to accepting their Dutch history. But after over a century of being a British colony, the Americans naturally inherited the history that was taught and the most commonly spoken and written language was English, making right. it difficult to read anything from a Dutch perspective. 
Speaking of reading from a Dutch perspective, if you guys are interested in watching me learn how to speak Dutch, I am being, I have been doing that um, the last couple of days during doing uh, like live streams, right? Doing uh, Duolingo courses and which obviously the videos will be up for, you know, you to watch whenever, but uh, I'm going to try to go live every day doing Dutch language learning courses. So if that is something you're interested in, go check it out on my channel for sure. And English remained by far the most common language in the following two centuries after gaining independence. Even though today, citizens with a majority English ancestry may make up as little as 7.8% of the U.S. population. Oh, wow. On top of this, the Dutch language had evolved over those two centuries of English rule, adding another barrier to reading historic documents left by New Netherland. New Netherland left behind 12,000 pages of letters, deeds, wills, journal entries, council minutes, and court proceedings. But no what? one knew what they said. And why didn't they just translate the damn thing? Like, there's got to be some Dutch people around at the time. Like, hmm. In 1801, a committee headed by, who would later be U.S. Vice President to Thomas Jefferson, Aaron Burr, declared that measures ought to be taken to procure a translation, but none were. In the 1820s, a half-blind Dutchman who was not very proficient in English <laughs> translated the documents, though it was poorly done. Nevertheless, a 1911 fire destroyed the New York State Library along with his translation. What? Now, along with his translation, they said, what about the documents, the original documents? A 1911 fire destroyed the New York State Library along with his translation. Mm. In the early 20th century, a highly skilled translator undertook the task. Okay. But after two years of dedication, his translation also burned up in the same fire. After which what? he abandoned the task. In the same fire? In the same fire 20 years later? Another fire? And also burned up in the same fire. After mm. which he abandoned the task. Finally, in 1974, a man named Charles Gehring began translating the documents. And when 19 what? Finally, in 1974, a man wow. named Charles Gehring began translating the documents. Later, a woman named Yanni Fenema joined him and together have translated over 7,000 of the 12,000 original documents, revealing the lives of New Netherlands inhabitants and the impact they had cool. on what would become New York and the United States. On a side note, I think this highlights how difficult it can be to be unbiased when you are limited to sources in one language, and it's something I struggle with on this channel. Essays, journals, and books have been written in the last few decades based on these translations. Several of my videos, including this one, took a lot of information from Russell Shorto's The Island at the Center of the World, which I highly recommend. But this is still relatively new information, so it hasn't quite made it into many states' school curriculum. Take okay, a look at my yeah. home state of Virginia. This, hmm. this is from a high school class called U.S. History to 1865. Only the English colonies are mentioned leaving an entire geographic gap as if New York didn't exist. Wow. And only the Spanish, French, and English are mentioned as exploring North America. Right. The Dutch are wow. mentioned once in the Virginia U.S. history class, but it just vaguely states that Dutch-speaking immigrants came to the area. Above that, it falsely states that the Puritans were seeking freedom from religious persecution in Europe, though they already had religious freedom in the Netherlands before coming to the colonies. It then goes on to state that, the middle colonies were home to multiple religious groups who generally believed in religious tolerance, including Quakers in Pennsylvania, Huguenots, and Jews in New York. Yes, there were Jews that came to New York, but only because of New Amsterdam and the tolerance that came with being a Dutch colony, though Peter Stuyvesant wasn't a fan. Okay. The one state that does appear to recognize the role that the Dutch have played in American history is, of course, New York, especially in more recent times. I was going to say their flag, and then that's crazy. I paused it right there. Yeah, their flag shows it. In 1915, orange. New York City adopted a flag influenced by the flag of the Dutch Republic. Which is, uh, yeah, if you flip it that way, right, the stripes up and down. And then I believe the princess flag or something, right? And then it got changed to red, white, and blue. And used in New Amsterdam. The seal at its center has an image of a windmill. Three windmills had been built in New Amsterdam. There is okay. also a beaver the trade of which was one of the main reasons for the Dutch colonization. Now, are those windmills still there? That'd be cool. ...of the region. In 1977, New York City changed the year on its seal from 1664 
the year the English took New Amsterdam, to 1625, the year that New Amsterdam was designated the seat of government for New Netherlands. Nice, nice. Given recognition. New York State has a 7th grade class called New York U.S. History that emphasizes the influence the Dutch had on New York nice. and the United States as a whole. And maybe just like culture always has in the U.S., this will eventually spread outward from New York across the entire United States. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button I did, actually. and subscribe for more geography videos. Thank you for watching. All right, guys, you heard the man. Hit like, hit subscribe. Um, for sure, go to his channel, check it out. Um, I always try to have people go to the original channel. And he does amazing, amazing, amazing videos. So definitely go check it out. And that is crazy um, how it did get suppressed because of the British influence. Um, and then obviously the British and the Netherlands uh, or the British and the Dutch and their, you know, kind of issues over the years and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, um, again, that was awesome. That was by the channel Geography Geek. The link to the original video will be in the description section down below. Um, and you guys take care. I will see you in the next one.